Hello and welcome to our online service for the third Sunday of Advent. Uh, our service this morning is going to have communion in it, so if you would like to prepare some elements, grape juice, bread, to consume later, that would be great. It's a great morning because we can welcome our own bishop, the Bishop of Bedford, uh, Bishop Richard, who's going to be preaching on our in our online service. And of course, he'll be celebrating and preaching at our in-church services this morning, uh, both at Battleston at nine o'clock and Woburn at 10.30. So it's great to have uh, Bishop Richard with us. I'm going to start now by uh, leading us in prayer, the collect for the third Sunday of Advent, and then an opening prayer to commit our time uh, to God. Let us pray. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we commit to you our thoughts and ourselves, our prayers, and enable us to hear and receive your holy word in this service this morning. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me with a robe of his righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the young plant come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. The reading today is from John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why then do you baptise if you are not the Messiah, not Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptise with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the word of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. A verse from that wonderful passage from Isaiah. What is the hope that we offer the world? Especially as we begin to emerge from getting on for a year of limitation and restriction, of economic distress and disruption, of social isolation and relational interruption. What is the hope that we offer the world? What is the hope that will lift us and restore us, that will renew humanity and take us forward? And by hope I mean not some reassuring fantasy that all will be well, but that which is what will be, 
if only we can place our trust in it. What is the hope that we offer the world? Part of the answer is in our Gospel. For the hope is surely that light to which John the Baptist points. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. That light, which as we will hear in that great Christmas gospel, shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It is the hope of the kingdom, that divine rule that encompasses both heaven and earth, the light that speaks of the victory of the risen Christ, of sin vanquished and death defeated. It is the light of Christ that is the love of God shining into the world, calling each of us to live within it, to reflect it in the way that we live. It is the hope of a child in a manger that is God with us, a sign of amazing love without measure, that whatever the sorrows and joys of our life means that we are loved and life has meaning. What is the hope that we offer? It is the light and love of Christ, the invitation to be citizens of heaven, both in this life and the next. That is the hope that we offer. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. But that is not the entirety of the love that we, of the hope that we offer. Isaiah 61, our first reading, is a remarkable passage. Not just because of the promise of restoration and return for the exiled people of Israel, but because, as I'm sure you know well, it is from that chapter that Jesus read in the synagogue, as recorded in Luke chapter 4. Jesus announces himself as the Anointed One. He is the Messiah, for the Messiah means the Anointed One. He is the one who will bring good news to the oppressed, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captive and release to the prisoner. He will proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Now, it's possible to read that in purely spiritual terms. The oppressed are those beaten down by the devil. The broken-hearted are the spiritually lost. The captive is the one ensnared by selfishness and greed. The prisoner, those imprisoned by sin. The year of the Lord's favour a spiritual message of redemption and salvation. And of course, Christ brings hope to all these and more. But that is not the whole story. Isaiah 61, which he quotes, and which those who heard it in the synagogue would have known by heart, is not just a spiritual message. The prophet is speaking about a renewed nation. It is a hope that Israel will be restored and renewed. The walls of the city and temple will be rebuilt. The people in captivity will be released. In place of justice, of place of injustice, there will be justice. It's not just a spiritual dream but a world of possibility. And in reality, some of it, such as the rebuilding of the walls and the temple, came about. This is not the whole story, because Jesus wasn't just interested in spiritual matters. He touched real-life lepers and made them whole. He reached out to those who were outcasts and brought them in. He transformed the lives of tax collectors, zealots, and even those who persecuted him by inviting them to follow him. He challenged petty restrictions in relation to the Sabbath, to women and to strangers. Luke 4 
was his manifesto. His mother's song was his theme tune. He hath showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. That's the hope we offer, the promise of transforming love that both transforms us, but also is about the transformation of the world, of creation. It is the promise that in God there is the promise of a new creation, that injustice is not the unalterable order of the day, but rather that by our lives, our faith and our action, We can make things different. One of the remarkable things of the last nine months, and there have been many, has been the way in which scientists across the world, supported by governments and others, have combined their skills to create not just one, but several vaccines. It is a gift of God that they are being rolled out at this very moment. A huge threat to humankind is on the verge of being neutralised. It's a remarkable achievement. A new order is not just a pipe dream when we use our God-given gifts. So why? Why? Why do we still live in a world where 10% of the population still live on under $2 a day? Why do one in 36 children in sub-Saharan Africa die in their first month of life, whilst in higher income countries it is only one in 333? Why do 8.9% of the world's population still have no access to proper toilet facilities and defecate in the open with all its risk and danger, or closer to home, Why in December 2019, according to Shelter, were 280,000 registered as homeless or even closer to home? Why in Bromham do women live on average 14 years longer than women in the parish of St Martin's Bedford, less than about five miles away? We can manufacture vaccines, but we struggle to find the resolve to help our neighbour in need. Indeed, we cut our overseas aid budget. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Recently, I've been reading about the period following the Second World War, aided by biographies of such people as Ernest Bevin, Nye Bevan and Clement Attlee. In particular, there was that remarkable swing to Labour in the general election at the end of the war, when the hero of the hour, Winston Churchill and his Conservatives, were roundly defeated. And why? In large part because people desired and were inspired by the Labour Party message of a new society that would be structured differently, taking seriously the needs of all, not just the few. The National Health Service, among other things, was a major symbol of this. In many ways, Churchill offered more of the same. That was some of his message. What mattered, what inspired, was the hope of something new. The circumstances today are not the same, but there are echoes. We have the opportunity of building on those shoots of neighbourly concern seen in recent months. And the promise of Isaiah, quoted by our Lord, reminds us that this is not an idle wish but a hope grounded in the love of Christ that renews all 
transforms all. What is the hope we offer? It is the confidence. Not, the, not just the life to come, but this life can be infused with light. That injustice can be overcome. That righteousness can flourish. That's what we offer. That is what you and I, we are called to live. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. O God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for people in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving health among all nations. Father, hear our prayer for the nations of the world where there is insecurity and conflict. In power we ask in Jesus' name all those who seek to reconcile people to each other and to bring peace. We pray for our nation and our relationship with the countries of the European Union. Father, we pray for all who will be most affected by the transition in the new year. We pray for businesses and those whose jobs and livelihoods depend on the trade between ourselves and the European Union. Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for our political leaders, both national and local. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. Guide and govern us by your Spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led in the way of truth and hold the faith in the unity of spirit, the bond of peace and righteousness of life. Father, we thank you for the universal church of which we are a part. We thank you for the local church and we pray for our leaders. We pray for our bishops, Alan, Richard and Michael. And we lift to you, Father, the life of the church in our benefice. Breathe your life-giving spirit that we might know you more and be people that make you known in word and deed. Father, we ask for your empowering spirit to enable us through the restrictions of our community life as a church. We thank you for the opportunities that technology and the internet provide. Father, we pray for those who are least able to access these. Father, enable us, we pray that you will build your church in, in this place and that the gates of Hades would not prevail against it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are unwell at this time. And we pray for the National Health Service, all those caring for those who are unwell, uh, those in charge of rolling out vaccination programmes. Uh, and we pray for those in our own locality who are unwell. We thank you for the health services and we pray for all those who deliver health and social care. Father, we remember before you in a moment of silence those known to us who are unwell and who are struggling at this time. Continuing to remember Jim Langford, David Natman and Kelvin White. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks for all that have gone before us in the peace of Christ, and we give you praise for all your saints with whom we share and with whom we have an inheritance. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. My Jesus, I know that you are present by your Holy Spirit. I love you above all, and I desire to receive you into my soul afresh this day. Since I cannot at this moment receive Holy Communion in the physical presence of my church family, come spiritually to my heart as I eat this bread and drink this cup, remembering all Jesus did for us through the cross. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, confident of your promise to be present with me always. Amen. So we come to the Holy Communion. If you have elements uh, available at home, at the end of this prayer, there will be a prayer that appears on the screen. And at that point, you can receive the elements that you have available at home. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by the offering of himself a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his Holy Gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for the third Sunday in Advent. And a special thank you to Bishop Richard for joining us as well. We hope to see you again next week. So let's just close the service together now with a prayer and a blessing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your great wisdom and strength and thank you for being an ever-present help in times of need. We ask that as you send us out from this service, we have a joyful expectation of what you are going to accomplish in each of our lives and ask that you would remain close to each one in the days that lie ahead. May the Lord bless us and keep us as we draw closer to Jesus. We pray that he would fill our hearts with love and joy and keep us rejoicing in the Lord and in the power of his might so that we may be strengthened in the inner man and woman equipped to do your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep on taking good care of yourselves and one another and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.